Hi, this is Kimball Garrett, the Ornithology Collections Manager at the Natural History Museum. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly changed my life as well as everybody else's, and working out of home has had its advantages in that I don't spend a big chunk of time every day on the road commuting to the museum and back home. So I've been able to wander around the neighborhood and the desert uh, woodlands out here in the Juniper Hills area on the north side of the San Gabriel Mountains much more than I would have otherwise. So the area known as Juniper Hills is on a gentle north-facing slope, about 3,600 feet in elevation with juniper woodlands punctuated by groves of Joshua trees and a whole variety of desert shrubs and annuals. So while we're still restricted as to where we can go and bird walks with groups of people remain out of the question, I thought I'd take you on a virtual bird walk through the junipers, showing you some of what I've been seeing and hearing this spring. Now, ornithologists know that if you want to know what birds are in an area, you'll detect them mainly by the sounds that they make. So we're going to pay special attention to some of these sounds as we walk. So let's get started. As we begin our walk, the first bird sound we hear is the three-note cooing of the Eurasian collared dove. These large pale doves are now widespread throughout North America after a population introduced from Europe uh, to the Bahamas uh, colonized the Florida mainland and then basically spread across the entire North American continent. Um, they've only been in our area here for about 20 years now, but they're a familiar sight and sound over much of the Los Angeles region, the Eurasian collared dove. These sharp chink calls are coming from a California towhee. This is a very widespread large sparrow that's familiar throughout the coastal lowlands, but it also gets out here into the desert foothills. And they're here year-round, non-migratory, um, and you'll see them down on the ground scratching for seeds. The chink call is, is pretty distinctive, and their song, uh, which you hear in the early spring, is basically a series of those call notes sort of run together into a loose trill. Now we're hearing the song of the Buick's wren. These little insectivores are found in brushy areas throughout Southern California. And they're probably the most persistent singers among all the birds in our area out here in Juniper Hills. Each individual can give a dozen or more different songs and the variety of songs and other calls that we hear out here is bewildering. Um, they're recognizable by that white stripe over the eye and habit of cocking the tails at an angle up into the air. The Buick's wren. Here's another sparrow. It's much smaller than the towhee that we saw earlier. The black-throated sparrow is truly a desert bird. You're not likely to see one over on the coastal slope. And although they'll drink standing water when it's available, they can get all of the water they need from their diet and their metabolic processes for prolonged periods. Listening to this bird, you have to be careful because the sparrow song can be very similar to some of the simpler songs given by Buick's wrens. These gruff calls are coming from one of the signature birds of our desert, the cactus wren. They're much bigger than the Buick's wren and the harsh grating songs and calls are nothing like those lively musical trills that you'll hear from the Buick's. These are big wrens. They build their globular stick nests in spiny plants. Out here especially, they prefer the choya cactus. Fortunately, cactus wrens are still common out here, but the small localized populations on the coastal slope are declining and of real conservation concern. Up ahead is not only a bright splash of color, but it's also one of our finest local singers. This is a male Scots Oriole, a bird of desert woodlands, and especially Joshua trees, that you're not likely to see closer to the coast. They show up here in the Juniper Hills area around the third week of March, and they'll stay through the summer. Our birds probably spend the winter in Baja, California, or somewhere in the northwestern mainland of Mexico, the Scots Oriole. Do you hear that drumming sound? These repeated drums are the equivalent of song in woodpeckers. 
And this drum's coming from a ladder-backed woodpecker. This is the common woodpecker of our desert woodlands. And it's closely related to the Nuttall's woodpecker, which you would see primarily on the coastal slope and in the mountain woodlands. In fact, these two species do occasionally hybridize, and I've seen hybrids in our neighborhood here. These fussy calls are coming from a blue-gray gnatcatcher. It's a tiny songbird that's flitting around in the juniper up ahead of us. These insect eaters nest in foothill and mountain chaparral habitats, but they can also be common in these juniper woodlands. There's another gnatcatcher species, the California gnatcatcher, that's much more restricted in habitat. It now just barely hangs on in remnants of coastal sage scrub that haven't been bulldozed for urban development or suburban sprawl on the coastal slope. But the blue-gray gnatcatcher remains quite common and widespread. So we've encountered some of the bird life in the arid juniper and Joshua Tree woodlands. But if you go just a few miles east to Big Rock Creek, it flows year-round out of the high San Gabriel Mountains. And this water allows a forest of cottonwoods, sycamores, alders, and willows to grow for miles. When you add permanent water in the streamside or riparian habitat that it supports, you'll encounter a lot of bird species you would not normally find in the drier desert habitats. And up here we encounter much denser bird populations and much more bird song. As soon as we start walking along the edge of the riparian forest bordering Big Rock Creek, the most prominent bird song we hear is from the house wren. It's incredibly loud for a songbird that's less than five inches long, and these wrens sing for much of the day. Each male can have up to 50 different song types. I love to watch the energy that goes into the house wren's song. You can see the singer literally vibrating as it sings. As the house wren sings away, we start to hear the call note of a spotted towhee, which is another large sparrow that prefers much denser brush and woodland understory than the California towhee that we heard out in the juniper woodlands. The spotted towhee's call is a rough nasal note that rises in pitch. There's a pair of towhees here now ahead of us, and the male's beginning to sing. And this song, it isn't much. It's just an unmusical, buzzy trill. But in other parts of their range, the spotted towhees can give much more musical songs. Out here on the west coast, they just sort of give this dry buzz. Up there high in the cottonwoods, we can hear the territorial song of a yellow warbler. Some really high-pitched slurred notes with an emphatic ending. Yellow warblers are very much at home breeding in these tall riparian woodlands, but they're somewhat adaptable, and they even breed in the willows that grow along the soft bottom channel of the Los Angeles River in the Griffith Park and Elysian Park areas of Los Angeles. Here's a flock of bush tips giving their soft little pit, pit, pit notes. These are tiny songbirds that are the only New World representatives of a bird family that's otherwise found only from Europe across to southeastern Asia. I'm sure you've seen bush tits in your garden or your local park, traveling in busy little groups of sometimes 10, 20 or more birds, gleaning arthropods from the leaves and the twigs. Out here we find bush tits in a variety of brushy and wooded areas from the dry junipers to the lush streamside woodlands. Vireos tend to be habitat specialists, and the warbling vireo that we now hear singing up in the cottonwoods and willows is the dominant breeding vireo in the tall riparian woodlands of our area. The song's a little nasal and squeaky, and it can go on and on. If we go farther upstream, up Big Rock Creek, where there's more oaks and pines and you start to get the big cone Douglas firs, we can get a couple of additional vireo species, the Cassin's vireo and the Hutton's vireo. And we used to have another vireo species out in this area, the gray vireo, which would breed in very dry sort of juniper woodlands and hillside scrub. 
But unfortunately, the gray vireo has disappeared from most of its Southern California range uh, for various reasons, some of which are, are unknown. Now we're hearing a sing-song melody of rich, whistled phrases that's coming from the tallest cottonwoods. I can't see the bird right now, but it's entirely brilliant red in color. It's a male summer tanager. The song's a little bit like that of a robin, but it's more burry, not quite so fluty. Summer tanagers only breed at a handful of places in Los Angeles County, and this stretch of Big Rock Creek harbors at least two territorial singing males this year. At this same site, they actually overlap with the western tanager, but the western is much more common higher up where there's oaks and conifers. Okay, now we're hearing another rich whistled song that sounds a little bit like the summer tanager, but on steroids. It's a black headed gross beak. And as we listen, we can see that the song is a lot more varied and prolonged than that of the tanager. This similarity isn't that surprising since summer tanagers are actually not in the tanager family, the family Thraupidae, but they're part of the cardinal family, the cardinality, along with the gross beaks and buntings. Black-headed gross beaks are common and they're very vocal in oak and riparian woodlands from our coastal canyons well up into the San Gabriel Mountains. Well, thanks for coming along on our virtual bird walk and I hope this has enhanced your appreciation of bird life that those of us who are uh, over the hill, as it were, encounter in the unique woodlands of the north slope of the San Gabriel Mountains.